Welcome back. This is finally the first advanced Fever Core 5.0 tutorial. And of course, I will start with the most noticeable improvement, the widget and UI system. As I mentioned in the update video, the advanced frameworks widgets are now material-based, which give them much more freedom and possibilities. And for starters, I will show you some methods to display widgets in the advanced framework core 5.0. Each widget of the Advanced Framework Core 5.0 is displayed by one widget component, which can be added to actors in a similar fashion as every other component and provides you with all the necessary settings and functions to manage the widget. To make things even easier, the Advanced Framework Core 5.0 comes with a number of ready-to-use actors for the most common use cases of widgets, including a stationary board in the world, which by the way no longer needs a mesh to support the widgets, although you can add one if you like. The Pawn UI, which is like the personal space of a player and works in VR as well as in desktop on mobile, by the way. And the Hat, which received some additional attention when we created the IF Core 5.0 and we'll get a more in-depth video later. And if you like neither of these options, you can just add the widget component to any actor and decide everything for yourself. With that, let's take a look at the widget component settings. For this, let's find the board actor and drag it into the level. As you can see, this actor for stationary widget display basically only owns a root component and the widget component. At first glance, the widget component has tons of settings, but many of them are actually of limited relevance for you, so let me walk you through the most important ones. First, let's find the user interface section. This is the most important section of the widget component because here we can actually decide which widget we want to display. Let's choose the menu widget that comes with the framework. Next, we can define its resolution either by adjusting the draw size here or we can just let the widget decide its size on its own and check this desired size boolean here. Next, let's have a look at the scale of the widget component. This is actually a really nice feature because you can use it to define the size of the widget that is displayed. Not, you're not defining here its resolution though, meaning you can make a high resolution widget and then set the scale value to very small and display it much as much smaller than you created it. For board UI, I personally prefer a scale of 0.2, so let's adjust it accordingly and go on. We can also change the pivot, which is basically the root location of the widget, which can help a lot with positioning. Lastly, we can choose a theme for our widget here. Just, we just need to check this boolean and add the data asset we want. Themes are actually really cool. They allow you to define color scheme, typography, and other designs in advance for all of your widgets just by creating one data asset, which you can use for each widget to give them a consistent look. And with an appropriate setup, the player can even completely change the look of, of all widgets in the level at runtime. However, for now, let's be content with this one only using the theme. Because with that, we are done. We just added our first widget to the level. Let's have a look. Now let's assume we want to create a new widget. Here you need to meet a few requirements to make the most of the advanced framework's new widget system. For starters, let's create a widget. Unreal Engine 5 finally gives us the opportunity to choose our widget's parent class upon creation. For our widget, that has to be the widget base. This class contains the multiple functions and features that work behind the scenes of the Advanced Framework Core's widget system, and your widgets will not work properly if they don't inherit from the base widget. Now here we are in our newly created widget. As you can see up here in the palette panel, the Advanced Framework Core 5.0 comes with a ton of ready-to-use widget elements. 
all of them neatly sorted into fitting folders. We will introduce you to all of them in another video. For now, let's just add the scaffold and get on to the graph. Here, you have another opportunity to declare the correct parent class for your widget by going to the class settings and defining the parent class here. The other very important step to take here before you continue with creating your widget is overwriting the get root function. To do that, you go here, select the root function and provide it with the outermost widget of your widget. In our case, this is the scaffold. If you cannot find your outermost widget in the variables here, it most probably is simply not marked as a variable. Boxes, for example, are not marked so by default, and in this case, you need to go back to the designer, select the respective widget element, and check the is variable boolean here. If you have trouble with the advanced framework course widget elements, or if your widget is not displayed properly, like this, for example, check the widget's parent class and get root function override. It's easy to forget setting up either, and most often this will solve your problem. And with this, we already have a somewhat displayable widget, as you can see, when we add it to the widget component of this one. All that without much ado in the designer or writing a bunch of code. Excited for the core 5.0's new UI elements? I hope so, because most of the next tutorials will focus on them since they are one of the biggest improvements in comparison to previous versions of the Advanced Framework Core. Bye for now. I will sign off. See you soon. Bye bye.